This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be elaborating on our command pattern by creating a kind of tracked history of our commands and being able to undo them as we choose. So that, you know, say if we placed a cube where we don't want it, we can undo that, um, but also being able to redo that if we change our mind. This is going to be relatively simple to do. We simply need to add a way to keep track of the cubes themselves so that we can kind of delete them when we want to undo them, as well as to track the commands themselves. So we can start this out uh, by jumping into our Visual Studio, and we're going to go to our cube placer. And what I want to do is I'm going to create a way that we can keep track of all the cubes that we've created. And this is simply because while we can say, you know, undo the command, we need some sort of way to reference which cube placement we're undoing. So I'm going to do this by creating a static list of type transform inside of the cube placer. And this is going to be called cubes. When we go to place a cube, we're going to make sure that this list exists. So we're going to say if cubes equals null, then we want to be sure that we actually set up a cubes equals a new list of transforms. And then once we've ensured that the cube list exists, we can simply say cubes.add new cube. Now that we have that in place and we have this place that we're tracking our cubes, what we can do is we can make, create a command or create a method to remove the cube. So what we're going to do is we're going to say public static void remove cube. And how we're going to check for our cubes is we're going to iterate through them and see does this cube match the position and the color of the command that we're undoing because that's the information that we have in the command is the position and color we don't actually hold like the specific cube itself so based on that we can effectively say this is the cube that we created we can delete it now because it's got the same information that we're looking for so we're going to say uh, pass in here two parameters of vector3 position and color color we don't need this transform cube. That was just, remember, the prefab reference to actually instantiate the cube, so we don't need that. But then what we'll do is we'll iterate through our list of cubes. So we'll say for int i equals 0, i is less than cubes.count, i++. Plus plus. And we'll say if cubes i dot position equals the position that we're requesting and cubes i dot get component in children we're going to get the mesh renderer dot material dot color equals the color double equal sign there, make sure that it's checking if they're equal. If those are both the case, then what we can do is we can destroy this cube and remove it from the list. So we'll say game object dot destroy cubes i dot game object. So we're going to destroy that entire cube and cubes the list dot remove at position i. And so that will completely remove that cube from our list. Now that we have that functionality in place, we can go to our i command. And here we can establish that commands will not only be able to be executed, they can also be undone. So we'll say down here, void undo. Same idea, returns void, no parameters, super simple. Anything can call it and always has that same very simple um, signature here. And then in our place cube command, we need to make sure that we're also implementing the undo function as well here. So I'm going to click there, control period, implement the interface. We, so we get this undo method as well now. I will delete the exception throw. And instead, what we'll do in here is we'll say Q 
cube placer. Again, we're calling that static class dot remove cube. And in this case, again, now remember, it's just it's just using this same information here. We're still using the same position and color because what we're saying here is at some point previously we placed a cube at this position with this color. Now we want to remove that specific cube so we can just call it with those parameters. So remove cube position color. And that's all we need there. Lastly here we just need a means to actually track the commands themselves and we're going to handle that in the invoker. So we'll go back to our command invoker and here what we're going to do is similar to how we have our list of cubes we're also going to have a list in the invoker of these commands. So we're going to say static list i command. We're going to call this command history and then we're also going to have a static int called counter and what counter's responsibility is going to be is that we're not always going to be at the end of the list. If we've you know gone through our you know we've done a number of commands and then we undo a couple we're actually going to be a couple of steps back and we may want to go redo those same things so we don't want to just delete them off the history either. So the counter is going to be a way for us to say we're currently you know the history has 30 steps but we're currently at step 25. The next thing that we'll do is when we execute our command, that's when we're going to actually add it to the history, when it's kind of being removed from the buffer and then officially placed into the history. So we'll say here, after we execute, we'll say command history dot add our command called C. And we'll also at this point increment our counter by one. So that every time that we actually add a command, we're you know stepping along with it. We're saying we've added this command, but we've also executed it already, so take that step. And for now, if we want to see this in action, what we can do is we can actually just debug log at this point. We can say debug.log command history length. And then print out the command history.count. And one last thing we need to do is to make sure that we initialize our command history on awake as well. And with that, in this log here, we can actually see we haven't implemented our undo function yet, but we can make a few clicks and we see that with each step our history is growing longer. So we have this now history of remembering where we placed each of these cubes. So now to actually undo this we need to kind of call the either undo or redo methods in some way. And how we'll do this, uh, currently I'm just going to do this in the invoker. You'd probably want to do this in a separate input manager um, class somewhere, but for now, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to simply do it right here in the invoker um, just to kind of show how this would work. So I'm going to say if we're actually executing some commands, I don't want to take in new commands at that point. So I'm going to say if the command buffer is greater than zero, we're going to do all of this information, else we can then start listening for some commands. And so what we'll do here is we'll say if input dot get key down key code dot z kind of the traditional undo key then what we'll do is we'll say if our counter is greater than zero then what we will do is we will decrement the counter by one and then call command history at the index of counter dot undo. And again here, we don't care about what the position of the cube is, what the color, we don't have any of that information, we're just saying whatever this command is, do the undo function. Else if input dot get key down key code dot R, we'll use R for redo. Then in this case, if our counter is less than our command history dot count, meaning we're not at the very end of it, 
Then what we'll do is we will say command history counter dot execute and then increment the counter. So we're really here, we're doing the same thing as when we'd added it fresh and new instead, but now it's already in the history, so we're just gonna execute it and step up the counter again. Now the last thing we need to do is that is say we undo a few steps and then we click again. We, you know, we don't redo placing a queue, but we create a whole new queue. That's sort of like, it's sort of like when you are working in some sort of text document and you delete a bunch of text and then start typing again. At that point, you've kind of changed the course of the undo history and you can't get back to the previous stuff that you had done. So what we'll do in this case is we're going to want to kind of cut off the history at whatever point. If we're, if we're somewhere deeper into the history than at the very end and we do a new command, we want to cut off the history at that point and um, kind of start fresh. So what we'll do is in our add command method up here, we're going to say if the counter is less than command history dot count, so we're somewhere not at the end of the history, then what we'll do is while command history dot count is greater than counter, we will say command history dot remove at countered. So what this is basically going to do is it's going to keep on taking the commands out from basically right ahead of the counter so that the counter becomes the very last one ultimately. And then once that's done, we can enqueue the new command at the kind of quote new end of the history. Honestly, we might not even really need this if check here. It's sort of belt and suspenders here because if this is the case, then if this is true, then this will be run. But technically speaking, if this isn't true, this won't run anyway. But so you could probably save a little bit. I think this will work fine if we delete this and just are a little bit more succinct with our code. If it screws it up, we will go back and replace it. Okay, so with all that in place, we can now jump back and actually see this in action. So if I hit play here, I can now add, we see our command history length is being increased. And now if I hit Z, we remove each cube in order. I can also hit R and replace them in order. However, if I go delete say these first two, or these the last two rather, and then to start adding some cubes over here. Now if I go undo, 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 and then redo, we lose the history of these two and we have our new history, our sort of new timeline is now in taking effect. So that's how you can implement undo and redo functionality using this uh, kind of tracked command history in the command pattern. I'm going to do one more video on the command pattern because I want to show one other thing that we can do with the history, which is to create a log of our history. Until then, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and consider becoming a Patreon backer to support more videos like this one. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.